indeed the star. <laughs> Literally. All right. Um. Well, hi. My name is Anamana Pia. I go by Pia for short. Um, as of right now, Happy New Year's Eve, but as of this video being posted, Happy New Year! Welcome to 2023! What do you know that I don't right now, as I am still in 2022? I hope it's better there. Maybe it's not. Hopefully it is. But anyway, as you can tell, I am dressed and ready to go to a New Year's Eve party, and I figured I would film my intro while I'm all gussied up, because then I look presentable on camera and I don't have to put makeup on otherwise. So, hopefully this isn't too echoey because this is where the best lighting is, but today I have for you <clears throat> a video of me setting up my 2023 bullet journal spread. So, I like to do a, a yearly spread just to kind of lay out my goals and intentions for the year as well as, you know, keep a catalog of things that I want to do this year and stuff like that. So this year I decided to go with like a 90s dial-up computer theme because of a, a little art that I saw on Pinterest when I was looking up inspiration for it. So yeah, let's get right into the bullet journal process. So I did the sketch without recording, mostly just because as you can see here, the recording setup isn't, like, super fantastic. I am still at my parents' house for Christmas vacation um, until, I think, two weeks from now? Maybe just one week? I don't know. I don't really pay attention to my school schedule. Things just kind of happen. Um, but anyway, this is my setup that I do at the beginning of my bullet journal, um, which I keep instead of a planner just because it actually makes me keep it. If I keep a planner because I'm not actively doing something with it, I just leave it somewhere and I forget it. Um, and especially within this next semester, since I only have Tuesday, Thursday classes, um, this will be really nice because I can schedule out my time a little bit better and manage it so I'm not just sitting in bed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, but usually to start off my bullet journal just to kind of keep it cohesive and you know once again it is a journal as i'm saying in the title of it um to keep kind of that aspect of it i like to do a setup at the beginning of the year um and this year my theme is like 90s dial-up internet for some reason um i saw a post of a january like loading thing on pinterest when i was looking for inspo for this and I just decided to make my whole theme this, um, which it's not like a big full spread for a month. It's just my 2023 setup. So what I like to do is I like to do a little welcome to 2023 page. And then I put in this year a space for um, me to write down some goals for the year, which I just find that writing goals down makes them feel a little bit more achievable um, because you're writing it down. So you're essentially kind of just manifesting it onto paper as well as in your thoughts. Um, and then I did a page for things like recommendations. So um, my friend has recommended me a lot of animes, but because I have it just like saved in our Snapchat chats, I often forget to look back. So being able to write them down in one convenient place is nice. Um, Back to, like, me being at my parents' house, it doesn't give me a lot of supply range, so I'm actually outlining my sketch with a ballpoint pen, and that's not something I would typically do. I had just already gone to Michael's this week, and I didn't want to go back to buy a, um, like, a fine liner, and I bought those markers. Those are Crayola Super Tips in the corner over there. Um, people who are really into bullet journaling kind of go crazier, crazy for Crayola Super Tips. I hear them talked about all the time and honestly, I'm gonna use them for this, like the whole bullet journal, specifically because they don't bleed. But because of that, a downside is that your color quality is not very good. You'll see that later on, they're kind of splotchy and they don't, they don't blend as nicely as alcohol markers, um, which is unfortunate, but 
at the same time, your page is not, you know, I, I color this solid blue, and so if it had bled through to the other page, it would ruin the spread that I have. So there's, there's positives and negatives to them, and I think the positives outweigh those negatives, but like, for the life of me, I could not figure out what was wrong with these ballpoint pens. I You can see in the corner, the left-hand bottom corner here, there's like another pen sticking out. And that's because I had to keep switching back and forth. I don't know if it was something with the paper, if it was because I didn't like erase my pencil on top because, you know, that's it would be hard to draw the uh, outline if I don't know what I'm doing. And I mean, here, I erased it a little bit to see if I could help it, but they kept like running out and not making solid lines. And then I kept smearing them and not drawing straight lines. So like skill wise, it's not my favorite spread I've done because I feel like it looks a little messy and rushed. But other than that, I really enjoy the like the dial up theme. I think it's fun. So. Yeah, on this page here, I have a couple of little uh, fun little references. The top pop-up says, Error! The application 2022 was unable to run. And then you have a new pop-up that's 2023. And then behind the 2023 pop-up, it says, New Year XE EXE is installing. Um, and then the installer says, Allow 2023 to make changes to this device. And those were some prompts that I took just because I have a PC and so I, I knew what some error messages would look like. Um, and also I just thought it was fun and um, like went with the, the theme of the new year. And then I also drew some little folders on there and the folders are labeled with work and school and then art on the other side. and. Um, I believe themes and trackers. And then I also wanted to include a little music bar because I listen to music when I'm doing everything. Um, and so I put in Hereditary, which is a JID song that I really like. Um, but like, I don't know, I'm like, I'm looking at the line quality and I'm just not happy with it because in order to get good straight lines, you can see me doing this here. I had to just kind of sit there and sketch my pen back and forth because number one, if I was drawing a straight line in one go, I would mess it up as I do several times in this video. Um, and also just because half the time the ink wouldn't even transfer. So I would just have like an indent in my paper and have to redo it. Um, but I, you know, it is what it is when you're using a ballpoint pen. I wish I had just went and bought a Micron because I'm running out of ink in a lot of mine anyways, but you know, <laughs> it's how it goes when you have to be resourceful and you know, saving money is also a good thing, especially after Christmas. So there's no like super harm in that. Um, but right now I'm working on my goals chart and I modeled this after a Chrome browser. So I'm just doing an outline here for it. And uh, the way I usually do my bullet journals is I fully sketch everything and then I fully line everything and then I color everything. I just find it easier, especially because it's a cohesive theme. So I wanna make sure I'm using the right colors. Luckily for me, there's only 50 colors in this um, Super Tips set, but some of them are kind of similar and they don't have names so especially for this spread and using the super tips in the future i'm going to keep that method just because i will forget what colors i'm using and so that was helpful for workflow just in general um but back to the contents of this page i didn't have a ruler as you know, I was talking about not getting my lines straight as I wanted them, but I'm kind of surprised at how well this page turned out considering I had to draw like the search bar, like the the part that says www.goals.com um, backslash 2023. Um, and it's not on any of the dots because it's hard to tell on here, but I am using a dotted journal. 
Um, and if you've never seen a dotted journal before, instead of lines, you have equally spaced dots in kind of the format of lines. So it's the same effect, but um, that's why it's called a bullet journal, is you have the little bullet points. At least that's what I've always kind of ran with. Um, but it allows you to create lines without having to have lines. Um, so it's nice to have a guideline, but also when you look at it, you can't super tell that there are dots there. Um, but I didn't have any dots to go on um, for a straight line here, so I had to just hope that I equally spaced it out. And I did pretty good on it, but the lines are not very smooth because you can see me doing that sketchy technique that I showed you, and <laughs> I picked up the book just now and looked at it, and I could tell you I was not super happy with it, but that's how it goes. Um, so now I'm drawing my little tabs, which um, I did take inspiration from someone's monthly calendar for this spread. Um, so they, they did this fun thing where the tabs were each, you know, day. So one of them would be Sunday and it would be in a whole column. But I just wanted the tabs to be different categories. And then I was planning on like essentially highlighting which goal fit into which category as I wrote it down. Um, but then the pen started smearing with the super tips really easily which becomes a problem a little bit later when I'm coloring. Not too big of a problem, but because of that, I just decided not to. Um, I think I might, now that the pen is dry, just see if it worked. You know, see if that works better, but I also don't really want to smear the setup any more than it is already smeared because the nature of how I work, I typically put my hand on top of pieces part of the piece that I've already completed, but because I was working with ballpoint pen and not like a fine liner, the the paper is slightly glossy. It's not like shiny or super glossy, but because it does have a slight gloss to it, the pen in the gel ink stays wet for a little bit longer, but I didn't have anything thin like this besides this ballpoint pen to line with. I think I'll probably talk f like, six more times about how disappointed I am in me, my choice to use ballpoint pen. But, you know, all things considered, it's it doesn't look horrible. Um, here I am doing my uh, little things to check out page, my recommendations page that I was telling you about earlier. And for this one, I took inspiration from someone's weekly setup that they had done in a computer theme, which I was surprised to find a lot of references for this because I've been looking at my references for my next spread, which is my January monthly spread, and I've been looking for bug-themed bullet journals, and there is, like, nothing out there. So if you want a video on that, I I can probably make one on that, since I might be the only person on YouTube who has a bug bullet journal. <laughs> I at least couldn't find anyone. But maybe I'm the only one who wants to make a bug-themed bullet journal. Who cares? I might make a video on it anyway. Um, but so I have four little categories here that I am working on for my recommendations. I couldn't think of all that many that I would want to track besides these, but I probably should have made like a miscellaneous one just in case I wanted to write anything else down. But I separated anime and manga into two different categories. And then I have movies and TV shows and recipes on there. And I just decided to make these look kind of like file folders. Um, as I said earlier, I took some inspiration from someone's weekly spread where they had done something kind of similar. Um, but I decided to do equally spaced, even ones. And um, I was the entire time I was doing this, I was thinking about how I wanted the end to have like every other line be colored in in gray. And I do do that, but <laughs> because I was having a really hard time drawing straight lines with the pen. I was also having a really hard time drawing straight lines with the marker, and you'll see later. I did it off camera, and I'm glad I did because I don't think I would have used the footage either way, but it doesn't look the best. And yeah, look at how badly I messed up that line right there. <laughs> um, but for as for like the fonts that I'm using and everything, I'm just kind of making them up as I go. Some of it is like intentionally I'm using like 
a bubble letter technique and then other parts of it it's just my handwriting um this is my grid cheat sheet and i decided to keep this in pencil even though i wanted to originally have it in pen and marker just because i was not only was i lazy but i also i drew the two lines that are supposed to be like the exact middle lines so i have a middle mark and the lines were like about as straight as me so not at all and i just gave up there i went okay i'll write the numbers out and i'm not doing any more lines today i'm done with lines i might go back in later just because i'm worried that the pencil will smear as this is a sheet that i'll be flipping back to a lot because it gives me references for like a fourth um like spacing things out equally in fourths and stuff like that which I do a lot because I like my spreads to be pretty symmetrical, um, but that's essentially what that's for. It's to help me lay out things symmetrically and not have to count each of my dots every single time, but I'll be honest, I probably will forget it's there and not reference it as often as I should. <laughs> But here is the last page now that I did for this spread, which is my January loading spread. And this was referenced from the original artwork that um, gave me the big inspiration for the whole spread. I saw something that said January loading in the, you know, kind of old pop-up computer font, uh, not font, but style. And, um, I was like, I have to do this. This is so cool. I don't know how I'm going to include it in my setup. And then I was like, oh, my 2023 setup. That's so easy. That's so smart. Um, so I kind of like I, I used the shapes and some of the like the, the new message and the goals and the graph and the calendar were all on there, as was, you know, the January loading. Um, but I at first was like, oh, I'm going to change them to be more topical to like the rest of what I did with the 404 errors and stuff like that of 2023 in the beginning. But the only one that I changed is the one that says 2022 404 page not found. Um, and then I just kept what they had for like the goals and the new message design. Um, and I think it was a good choice because I wouldn't have balanced it out as well as they did. I also really liked their like layering and I know that I wouldn't have layered it enough either. So, cause I like overlapping things never really cross my mind when I'm doing art. I need to do more of that cause it makes it look more realistic, you know? Um, but this page is definitely my favorite. It was my favorite in all steps, but like, especially to color, it made the whole thing come together so well. And I, I don't know, I just, I included a different color in this page than the rest of the pages had. And I think that's what really brought it together. Um, but yeah, I'm going to shut up for a little bit as the coloring is about to start and just let you enjoy that.
From this, oh, well, not this angle, specifically now that I put my book up. That was really smart when I was filming. Um, but with this color, you can see, like, what I was talking about with how splotchy these markers were. And also, I feel like you can kind of see, maybe, um, how it was smearing the pen. I know there's a section later on where you can really see the pen smear into this light marker. Um, but... It's splotchy, and that's because they're water-based markers, so they're just gonna layer over each other. Which is nice to some extent, because you can use the same color to shade this same section you were working in. But they do leave kind of like a little- like, it gives me little kid coloring vibes, and that's fine. It's just not exactly what I wanted. Um, but other than that, I do like these using these markers for a bullet journal better than, like, say, using Copic markers, which I have done in the past. And the reason for that is because of the bleeding problem that I was talking about. Um, I think I checked a while back, but you could see me flip the page just to look and see if it was bleeding over to the other side because on the next page is my goals tab, and I knew that I wanted that um, section to be white. I didn't want to do the, the blue background on it, and because it was modeled after a chrome tab, and a chrome tab is very white, and I also wanted to use the colors as the tabs on the chrome um, browser engine, so that way I could highlight them, because that was, once again, my original plan was to highlight the goals in the color of the category that they fit into, um, because my goal categories were things like art, social media, lifestyle, and home. And like, for example, a goal that I wrote down for social media was to hopefully get to 1k subscribers by the end of 2023. I don't think that's a terrible goal to make. Hopefully we reach it. I would love to reach it sooner, but I also don't want to make unrealistic goals for myself and then get upset if they don't happen. Just because who wouldn't get upset if you make a lofty goal for yourself and it doesn't happen? So I'd rather make a small goal and hope that it happens and maybe get more than that. Um, but yeah, so I made a goal for 1k followers, and then for my art, I made a goal to get better in, um, like, background work in my art, because I draw a lot of portraits, and I want to do a little bit more story-driven art, and my BFA is really story-driven this year, and I've just had a lot of fun planning it and everything. And then, like, a lifestyle goal that I put down was, like, to get back in the gym, because I used to weightlift all the time, and I miss being strong. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> who wouldn't like to get back in the gym? Um, but so he here in the coloring, you can see me kind of like decide if I wanted to, you know, do the correlation of the tabs with the colors that I already had, or if I wanted um, to use different colors. And I decided to use the colors I had. And I'm glad that I did, because if I didn't, it wouldn't have worked, it wouldn't have looked good with the rest of the palette. And this page, that page was a little boring, I'll be honest. But that's okay, because it's gonna get filled over the year. Like, that's what I'm telling myself with some of these pages, is like, I know they're boring now, but like, when you look back on it at the end of 2023, they're gonna look so much better, because they're gonna be full. Um, and it's true, they will look better at the end of the year. But... I, so another beef that I have with these markers, and then I'll let you enjoy me coloring again, is I bought 50 of them for $9.99, so I can't complain too much, right? But the value range in these markers is kind of ass. Um, you can see, like, me flip back and forth to the swatch page a few times, and, like, some of the colors are so identical that I'm like, really, Crayola? 
you have such a wide like color range i know you can put different colors in here like why do i have a skin color like a peach color and then i have like another peach color that's the same exact marker but with a different colored cap on it like did someone mess up Am I the only one who set, like, I swear to God, has duplicates? Maybe not. But maybe I am. Maybe I got mispacked or something. Probably not. I'm being, like, a little conspiracy theory -y. Um, But when I was coloring, so one more thing, and then I'll shut up. Uh, when I was coloring these, I, like, you can see me go really carefully around the letters. And that's because I'm using a really light color and the marker was making the pen bleed. And I didn't want like all of my handwriting to go away. Um, if I ever have to use a ballpoint pen again, what I'll do is I'll just do the outlines of things. And then I'll like, if I have to write on top of them, like in this case where it has like movies and TV right on where I'm coloring, I will just do that after I color. Cause I think that will be a much smarter idea. We have rolled around to my favorite part of the entire spread of my 2023. Um, I said um so many times in this video. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I decided to go with the blue background on this page too. It's maybe like a good way. I felt like I should have used the blue more in the background of other pages but at the same time this is like cohesive enough because you know you have your 2023 like title page and then this is essentially your 2023 conclusion page which i don't usually do in like i don't do like a by january page at the end of january um i know some people like to do monthly reviews so i might kind of put that in there i think it's a it's a good way. I'm severely mentally ill, so I like to track my <laughs> my mental health things because I'm a very forgetful person as well. So it's nice to have like a journal in some capacity to hold on to a lot of stuff like that. So maybe like monthly reviews would be nice. A lot of people do like a year in pixels in their like yearly spreads like this and i decided not to this year just because number one i always forget about it and number two because i was like oh well you know i do mood trackers and mental health trackers and all of that every month so i don't need to do that and yeah it's true i i am more than comfortable looking back to each month and seeing where I was at and sit, but you know it's I also understand the appeal of having them all in one place I just think I would get lazy and be like really why did I make myself do this twice every day even though making myself do that twice every day is literally just picking up a marker in a specific color and then 
using it to color in a teeny tiny square. It's not that much work. I'm just dramatic and... But I knew that, so I decided not to. Which I think in the end will be a good decision for me. But, yep, there's all my marker swatches, as you can see. I'm going back and here is the one of two colors that I added to this spread that actually I think, no, yeah, I did add another color after this, but these are only used on this part of the spread, nowhere else. And I think that makes this spread so much better. I should have included these colors in the rest of it, but at the same time, I don't know where I would put them. So I'm not like super mad about it, but I think this one turned out so well. It looks good right now, but like once I add the muted, like essentially this color that I'm using now, but a little more gray tinted, it just, mm, chef's kiss. I think the way that this pen smeared on the calendar actually kind of worked in my favor just because it makes it stand out from the background a little bit more. But I am interested, maybe I just didn't let this page dry long enough, but this page smeared way more than all the others. But these are my little marker swatches that I did. And here is the final glamour shots of the entire spread, which is only a couple pages. I, don't get me wrong, I like that they included the key on that first page, but at the same time, I'm someone who uses both sides of my pages for all of my spreads. So that was also kind of why I had to figure out how to do my 2023 setup, just because it was a little funky. But there's my gray lines that I was telling you about. They're not super even, and don't look at them too long, please. <laughs> but other than that, that's about it from me. Let me know if you want me to do more bullet journal videos in the future. I'd love to do one every month because, you know, I make a new spread every month. So just let me know if that's something you would like. All right. I'm going to head out. Bye. Love you all. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like the video, do all the things, comment, please. <laughs>